for uh, Dr. Albitz. My sister-in-law is a pediatrician in the Los Angeles area, and she's found that most of her resistance uh, for vaccines is coming not from her lower income patients, but from her Beverly Hills patients. And I was wondering uh, what the distribution uh, among the American people of the resistant, uh, vaccine resistant <coughs> folks are coming from. No, it's an excellent question, and it, it's an interesting dichotomy. So if you look at all unimmunized children right now, we actually had a study that just came out of Colorado um, about two months back, look at the incidence of pertussis and uh, your risk of acquiring pertussis, it's whooping cough, uh, whether you're vaccinated or not vaccinated. It turns out, by the way, that you're 23 more times more likely to get pertussis if you're not vaccinated. It's funny, it's almost like it works. Um, but also in that study, what they were able to find was that about 11% of, uh, of the total unvaccinated population is because of non-religious vaccine refusal. That's another word for the, the anti-vaccinationists. So that means that you've got another quick head math, uh, 89% uh, that is probably unrelated to this. And a lot of that is actually uh, coming from poverty. And so it, we've got it in two different groups. Um, you've got some that simply have a lack of access to health care, and that's something I'll also talk about very briefly tomorrow. Um, but then, yes, the higher income people who are not vaccinating do tend to be the more vocal ones. They do tend to be the ones that we see within the pediatrician's office who, um, who are not vaccinated. I think it's probably related to the fact that, number one, they have access to resources. Uh, they have social networking uh, that people of lower socioeconomic status may not have. I think it's also um, a lack of humility. Uh, in a society where elitism is you know, a bad word, you know, no one's uh, an expert, then everyone's an expert, uh, we're starting to run into that problem there as well.